This is a New South Wales Trainlink VZ. The oldest type of train still serving the Australian megacity, Sydney. Designed more than 50 years ago, these trains have covered many million miles on the electrified regional rail lines in New South Wales. So join me for a trip on this train as we travel up the beautiful Blue Mountains line and explore the troublesome history with us best on the railways in New South Wales, as well as these trains' eventual replacement. Our journey begins from Sydney's stunning Central Railway Station, which can be conveniently accessed by the tram lines either at the stop down here, or even better, at the L1 line stop that's located right under the canopy for the main entrance. I mean, it doesn't get much easier getting from the tram into the station than this. And speaking of heading into the station, let's do just that, as we'll be catching one of the V-sets bound for the Blue Mountains line. Entering the Grand Concourse is where you will find most long distance and regional departures leaving from Sydney. And wow, what a beautiful station building. This actually reminds me a lot of a station I'm fairly familiar with back home in Europe, Stockholm Central Station, and I'm sure you can see why. And just like the station in Stockholm, here you'll find plenty of station facilities, including this baggage storage service, a convenience store, as well as a small restaurant, There's also some lovely historic posters depicting the station's history. Next to platform number one, you'll find a ticket office, should you require any assistance in purchasing tickets, or just need help in general. Here you'll also find some vending machines, selling everything from power banks to power raid. The station is split into three main parts, with a fourth under construction with the arrival of the Sydney Metro. There's eight above ground through platforms, mostly serving Sydney trains, suburban services. Two underground platforms serving the T4 line. But we don't care about those, as our train will be using one of the 15 bay platforms for long distance and regional trains. Our train being the 723, bound for Mount Victoria, leaving track number 7. So let's go and catch our train. Ticketing is super easy, you just simply tap your Opal or normal debit credit card on the gate line readers and your fare will automatically be calculated once we tap off at our destination. Our train is already ready for boarding, which is a New South Wales Trainlink V-set built in batches from 1970 onwards by Com Eng and can reach speeds of up to 115 km per hour. Also serving similar interurban services on the electrified network is the newer H-sets. And for the unelectrified lines, you get the Endeavour and Explorer railcars. And if you want to go even further to places like Sydney and Brisbane, you can catch the XPT, the Australian version of the iconic Intercity 125 train from the UK. But enough about other trains, it's about time we catch ours. But first, I would just like to mention how clean and simple New South Wales does their passenger departure boards. They are so clear and easy to understand. I noticed on my way to board the train that one of the intermediate cars is actually a former cab car that was used in one of the now retired batches of trains. Instead of scrapping it, this one has been repurposed as a non-functional intermediate carriage. We can even see the remains of the former cab. But anyways, let's head on board the train. All seating is unreserved, so you can just board wherever you want and go pick a seat. Which means we'll have to go on the upper deck, right? The seats are reversible, so if you want to face the direction of travel, simply just pull the grab handle. Our train is now ready to depart. And we start moving right on time. First our train has to navigate the complex set of junctions just outside the station. But once that has been completed, we can start running express. 
And as we overtake the slower commuter trains, it's a great time to take a look at the route map for today's journey. The 723 Mount Victoria service is expressed from Central, only making stops at Strathfield, Parramatta, Blacktown and Penrith before running local all station stops to Blackheath, which is as far as I'll be travelling. This is a distance of 120 km, which is covered in 2 hours and 10 minutes, giving the train an average speed of 55 km per hour. After Blackheath, the train continues to Mount Victoria. With our journey now well underway, we have quickly reached our maximum speed of roughly 110 km per hour. So let's go for a wander around the train. There's not much difference between the seating on the lower and upper decks, with all of them coming in this style of 2 plus 2 seating, with some variation by the stairs. The train also features quiet carriages, which is great for a silent commute. There is also some limited luggage racks, in case you are bringing bigger bags. Very handy as these trains have no overhead storage. As this is a fairly old train, the doors are manual, so you have to remember to close them if you want to cross over to another carriage. But as the seating layout is largely identical in this carriage, let me instead show you the more interesting part. This is the area of the former cab car. Here you can see they have stripped out the doors that used to be for the driver, as well as made this space a bit more open. But the view from the window is not quite as good as on a driverless train. And of course I wouldn't forget to show you the toilet. It is fairly small. The door can easily be locked using this knob. There's a small sink which was working, as well as a hand dryer and toilet paper. I mean the train is definitely showing its age, but it's functional and in decent condition, so thumbs up. Time flies quickly and we have already made it to Penrith. And before we get to the fun part of the line up in the Blue Mountains, I guess we should talk about the less great part of these trains. In 2017, the Sydney train network ran into a major problem as asbestos was found in some parts of the train components in the driver's cab of some train models. This hazardous material is linked to serious lung diseases and prompted immediate actions due to its health risks. This led to the removal of several train types in the fleet, including five of these V-sets after asbestos was found. A strict program was put in place to have the asbestos removed. In the end, it was found that the asbestos was mostly contained to parts of the train that posed no risk to the driver or passengers, and after a thorough trip to the maintenance facility, the trains returned to service again. But now on some more positive notes, we are currently making our way across the Blue Mountains, which means we have swapped the bustling cityscape of Sydney for the calm green hills in less than two hours, which you'll enjoy from these very basic seats, where you'll find a coat hook, a wooden armrest. The seats are decently comfortable, but honestly I would expect more from a train that dares to have intercity painted on the front. There's also no power outlets, but that's to be expected on a 50 year old ish train. Overall it's not really adequate. But luckily they don't have much time left in service anymore, as a replacement is currently on the way in the form of the D-sets. They will bring some much needed improvements, including power outlets and better wayfinding and digital screens as well as better accessibility and dedicated space for bikes. Following delays in production, the trains are currently undergoing testing and are set to enter service later this year. And just like that, we are now arriving into Blackheath, where I chose to travel to today. As it's a great transit accessible place to start a hike from. A ticket from Sydney to Blackheath is generally a fixed price of just under 10 Australian dollars, with discounts offered when you travel off-peak. This seems like okay value to me for a regional journey of 2 hours. Thank you so much for joining me on this trip. 
If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you're subscribed to the channel as I try to upload a new one every Sunday. You can also follow me over on Twitter at IntercitySimon. I usually post lives from my travels over there, so it's a great place to get a sneak peek at what videos might be coming to the channel in the future. Thanks for watching.